We need to know how to produce basic drawings of a red blood cell and a white blood cell known as a phagocyte. A red blood cell has no nucleus, so we only need to label the cell membrane. The red blood cell has a biconcave shape. I like to think that from the side you see two caves. A tricky question from a past paper following the old specification asked why a red blood cell appeared paler at the centre when looking at it through a light microscope. You could have either answered it had no nucleus or that it is thinner at the centre due to the bioconcave shape the more light passes through the centre. Handily, this shape provides a larger surface area for oxygen absorption and they are flexible and small so they can fit through narrow blood capillaries. Finally, the red blood cells contain haemoglobin which is an iron containing molecule that enables a red blood cell to carry oxygen. Phagocytes have a much more irregular shape and you'll need to be able to label the nucleus, cytoplasm and the cell membrane. Phagocytes are a type of white blood cell and they fight pathogens like bacteria and fungi. For example, they can engulf bacterial cells and then break down the bacteria using enzymes in a process called phagocytosis. The blood has four main parts. The red blood cells, which we have already mentioned, white blood cells like phagocytes, which help defend our body against pathogens, platelets, which are required for clotting blood. For example, if you have a cut on your finger, the platelets will clot and seal the wound and stop the bleeding. Finally, the plasma, which is made mostly of water, carries carbon dioxide, soluble food like glucose, urea, which is a waste product that will end up in urine, hormones like insulin, and finally helps to distribute heat around the body. When you get hot, your skin turns red as blood is diverted to the surface so heat can be transferred to the environment more easily and help the body to cool down. In the next lesson, we will look at the structure of the heart.